Hey guys, in this video we're going to learn how to print nodes in a binary search tree using recursive calls and in-order traversal. So it's kind of a mouthful. What we mean by in-order traversal is that we want our nodes to print out from lowest to highest. So it's the opposite of like a post-order traversal. And here we have our array. This is similar to what we did in our last video. These are all the integers 1 through 10. There's no re repeats or anything like that. And then here we're calling our insert node function to create that tree. And then the only th other thing we have going on in main is we're calling print nodes, it's print nodes function. So before we get too much into the code, let's go ahead and take a look at what our tree will look like. So this, if you, if you read in these numbers in this order, calling this insert node function, you're gonna get this exact tree that we have over here. And again, this site is provided by the University of San Francisco. Uh, and it's a pretty awesome site. I encourage you to check it out, the link is below. But what we have here is our root is five, and then, but what we want is to, to print out this node, this one first, and then the two, and then the three, and then four, and then five. So we have to think of an algorithm that will, that will allow us to do that. And if you'll remember that for any subtree, or for any tree period, the left child is going to be less than the value of the node before it. So all we have to do to get down to this one, or, or any lowest value, is just to call left child, left child, left child, just all the way down until we can't do it anymore. And then if this one, for example, had a right child, it would be greater than one. So we wanna keep calling left child until we can't do it anymore. And then what we wanna do is go ahead and print the value of this function. Now, if this one did have a right child, we would know that it, it would be less than our two here because otherwise it wouldn't be on the left branch of this subtree. So if we consider two our root, anything to the left of it is going to be less than two. So these are integers, but maybe we had 1.5. That might be a right child of this node here. So we wanna call left child until we can't anymore. And then once we get, get all the way down to our tree, we wanna go ahead and print out that node. And then once we're done printing out that node, then we wanna call it on the right child. And so that logic right there is our entire algorithm. That's all we're gonna to have to do. Uh, but of course, you know, that's, it's fairly, it's not extremely difficult to understand, but it can be confusing. So I'm gonna peel this back. And as we walk through our code, you, we'll kind of talk about what it looks like on this tree. I should go ahead and just show you what it's gonna look like here. So here it's printing out. You can see the numbers shooting over. And this is an in-order traversal. This is exactly what we're gonna try and do and then it's gonna exit out. So now moving back to our code here, we'll go ahead and take a look at our .h file. And again, hopefully you saw the last video, you know kind of what's going on here. The only thing we have stored in our leafs are a number, an integer, and then everything else is basic, what you need to create a node in a binary search tree. So here we have something kind of interesting because we see the print function that we called in our main, in our main.cpp file. And then you see that we also have another function, an overloaded function. And the reason for that is because we want to start at the root of the tree here. And each time we're going to call another function recursively, we're going to need to pass in the node that we want to call that on. And so for us to be able to start like that in main, we would need to pass in the root here. But of course, our root is kept private. And so we can't access it except through these functions here. And of course, you know, if we can only access it through these functions, you know, we would have to have like another function that all it did was return root and, and that would be a whole lot of hassle. So instead what we've done is we've got this print node and go ahead and look at our CPP file. What it does is that it actually calls our recursive print node. And let's just walk through this. So if root equals null, then we just print out that it's empty and we just return out of this. We don't need to do anything else. Now, if root does not equal null, which means that we actually have a tree, even if it's only one, even if it only has one leaf, then we're going to call print nodes and we are going to pass in root here. And so now we start with this print nodes function. And so we can see that this print node is still on the stack because this function has not exited yet. And then it's going to go ahead and pop on another, our first node here. So this, this five node is going to be put on the stack or rather the print node associated that with with that five. So here we're gonna follow the same logic we talked about. We wanna call left child every time we are able to. So we just have a basic if statement saying if current node left child does not equal null, then we wanna call print nodes on that left child. And we just keep doing that. So in this situation, we have our five. It has a left child that does not equal null. So it'll call 
we're gonna call print nodes and pass in this left child to it. And then we're gonna check if that node has a left child, and it does. So we're gonna call again the function on its left child. And then we're again, we're one more time, we're gonna check if it's left child that equals null. It does not, so we're gonna call it again. So eventually we get down to the situation where, okay, it's left child does equal null. And so then what we're gonna see is what we, we're all the way down to the bottom of the tree. So we wanna go ahead and print out the value stored on that node that we're at right there. So this will print out our one. And then we have another if statement saying, okay, if right child does not equal null, then we'll call print node. And obviously in this situation, it does equal null. So this function is gonna exit out. And so it's gonna, it's gonna pop off the stack. So as soon as that one pops off, as soon as our, our leaf with a value stored of one pops off, we're gonna be right here, right? That this print node is what we just called and had been put on the stack, it's gonna pop off. And we're gonna go ahead and print the value at that location. And then we're gonna check if the right child equals null. So it's not the, the case. So then the function that we called that we passed in two is going to pop off the stack and we're gonna be at our three node. And so it's gonna print itself and then it's gonna call on right child because it does have a right child. And following this basic logic, we can see that we end up with exactly what we saw when we printed out, right? It's gonna print out this one and that's gonna pop off the stack. And it's kind of cool using this print because you can kind of see when things pop off. And so really that's, that's all there is to it. Following the same basic logic, you'll get your in order traversal. And I encourage you if, you, if you're not quite convinced or if this doesn't, you're not sure that this all makes sense, that go ahead and walk through this code, taking a look at this right side of the tree and see if it does make sense to you. And remember that you can always come over here and hit print and see what it actually does as far as an in order traversal. And so I should probably show you that this actually works. So back over here in main, we build and run this and we can see it uh, prints out all of our leaves starting at one all the way down to 10. So that's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.